around Stamford Bridge and Romelu Lukaku has been nothing short of a disappointment of a signing. Did I tell you so? Yes, I did. Do I have the solution? Yes, I do. And we need to see how now the media is going to portray Romelu Lukaku. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Kafka Zubratuk here and today's video is going to revolve around the 100 million pound man. Romelu Lukaku was meant to be the icing on the cake. He was meant to be creme de la creme. He was meant to be our Erling Haaland, Karim Benzema and it's far from the truth. I told everyone and I will reiterate it that I told everyone because no one wants to listen to me. But now the fans have changed. Alex Goldberg releases a video that is damning and you know what I've got opinions on that and you know what clip it and send it to Alex because I think Alex is spot on but my question is why was Alex not saying this prior to us signing him? Why was everyone silent? Why was everybody backing this signing even though they knew Romelu Lukaku is not Chelsea caliber. That's the question. The fans at Stamford Bridge, well, they booed him again yesterday. And the reason why they booed him was Kovacic was coming off and they wanted Romelu Lukaku. And they wanted him to be taken off because of his lackluster effort. And we will talk about that. We'll talk about the details and I'll tell you the solution. One simple solution and Chelsea get back to fluid, flying, colours football. Easy. But before we get started, you guys know my motto. I'm harsh, but I'm fair, and I'm always honest. And all I ask from you lot is a simple like button. If you're new, subscribe because you will enjoy the content. I do not hold my punches back because I don't care what anyone. You think I'm gonna get a job at Chelsea TV? By the way, I'm honest and explicit and if anything, transparent with my moves, no chance. They don't, they will never put me on their channel. And the reason they won't is because I won't be the company shield that tells you, Romelu Lukaku's just going through this because he's that low on confidence. No, he's just not good enough. And that was the reality. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know your thoughts. Look, we all knew when we signed Romelu Lukaku that this was not gonna work out. Deep down, every single one of you, even though you were back in it, even though you were claiming, oh, I watched into Milan. No, you didn't, you liar. You did not sit there week in, week out, 38 games in Serie A watching because 9 out of 10 times the games clash with the Chelsea games. So you're a Chelsea fan, you're going to be watching Chelsea. Secondly, Roman Lukaku's touch did not improve and I've got videos. If you don't believe me, go back to when we were linked with him. I said, this is a panic buy, this is reactionary to not get in Haaland. And the reality is, Chelsea have caused themselves a hundred million pound problem. And this problem is not easy to solve. And the reason it's not easy to solve is because you can't bench him and just throw him in the bin because you're devaluing an asset. And at the end of the day, Chelsea operate on a balance sheet. Mate. He needs to work. This asset needs to be sold. They don't want to loan him. They don't want to absolutely bin him and lose the value in him. They need him to work. And if he doesn't, they need to find a way to offload him. And you can't offload him in his current form, in his current like sanity because of the way he's moving, lackluster, nonchalant, argumentative. His body language stinks. And I hate using the term body language because I am not an expert who can read body language. But the way he was playing yesterday articulates he doesn't care about Chelsea. And after his interview, I am certain about that. I am absolutely certain. Let me just color this in with a few numbers, okay? Because a lot of you are gonna say, Alex, you have an agenda. There's no agenda here. This is just the hard truth. 31 touches in 120 minutes of a game. One dual one out of 10 attempted. This is mad. He is his fundamental game is based on jewels. He is such a strong individual. He's intelligent off the pitch. He is intelligent on the pitch. The way he plays in and absorbs tactics, you can tell there's a football brain in him. The issue is his technical ability. This man is not a fool. I've said this on many occasions. He will dominate when you get into a battle. When there's space in behind, he will run the channels, he will do all the hassling and hurrying, when there's space one-on-one, -on -one, he will be a man because he'll knock it on, he'll get around them, the Aston Villa game, the one that everyone got gassed about. The problem is, is you play for Chelsea Football Club, there is no Aston Villa with that leave 30 yards of space for you to run out and chase your touch. That doesn't happen. At Chelsea, at this level, there is going to be two banks of four and your touch needs to be spot on. Your layoffs need to be on point and more importantly, your confidence needs to be tipped point and not rattled the way it is right now because he is not as bad as he's showing. He is not, but once your confidence goes, so does your touch, so does your fundamental ability and it 
literally become what you, he has become right now, a shell of himself. And finally now, fans are seeing this. I said this and I've been on this train even before the signing. I said I don't agree with it. Will he get goals? Most probably will. Yeah, most probably will get a few numbers here and there. But now, match down fans booed him. They booed it. Kovacic came off. I spoke to of numerous, and I'm telling you numerous, at least 15 fans that were at the stadium. And I said, what was the booing about? What are you booing? Kovacic coming off. No. Fans were upset that Romelu Lukaku was subbed off. The fans were absolutely frustrated. They said the section that they were sitting on, they were saying they were not happy that he was not taken off because they want him to be punished for his performance. They didn't like the, the effort he put in. They didn't like the attitude he had. Listen, one thing about Torres and Morata, they ran. And that's why the fans gave him so much time. Timo Werner runs, and that's the bare minimum. Tangible goods. You can look at a stat sheet and go, you know what, he ran 13 kilometers today. He tried. Oh, look, he's hassling and Harry. When the player doesn't try, and you paid your hard-earned money to go to this game, you traveled, you woke up 6 a.m., you traveled to go see your team. And this guy doesn't try. It frustrates you, it harries you, and you get annoyed. And then more importantly, this is the one. We all know social media fans have a huge influence, and I don't care what anyone says at the club. Social media fans have a huge influence. They buy kits, they watch all the games, they keep the club interactive on a social process, and more importantly, the clickbaits help. Chelsea, go to, you go to the Chelsea app, you go to the Chelsea Twitter account, Instagram, it helps. So when the biggest Chelsea fan, size-wise, apart from George Benson, Alex Goldberg comes out with a video calling out Romelu Lukaku, and everything he said is spot on. So if any of you try to clip me and try to say I'm causing any beef or anything, you're just trying to stir up drama. This is spot on. Everything he said is spot on. Romelu does not look like he's trying nothing. My question is, where was this before we signed? Because we all know, and I know Alex knows his football. I really do. He knows his football. Why did he think Romelu Lukaku had a touch? Why did he think Romelu Lukaku was going to be successful in this system? Why did everyone, every big Chelsea YouTuber, come out and back this signing like there was nothing could possibly go wrong with a signing? The reality was this was the wrong signing and no one wanted to voice it. But now... I guarantee you they're all going to come out and be negative about it. Because it's easy to turn now, it's controversial, and this is the... Because now Alex said it, everyone's going to copy. And for me, it's frustrating because we all should have our own opinions. And when you're wrong, you should openly say you're wrong. And Alex did that. I respect that. I want others to follow suit. I want others to follow suit. Well, another thing that really made me laugh is, now that people are against Romelu Lukaku, people are being childish about it. Ah, uh, la caca, I don't get it. Don't want to understand it, like Lou Crappy, don't understand it. Call him Lukaku and say he had a bad game, right? At the end of the day, we're all men and women and adult, and we should all act in an appropriate way. Don't give him stupid nicknames. And more importantly, there was a lot going around. Romelu Lukaku didn't celebrate when Kepa saved the penalty. A lot of the players went up to him, gave him a hug. Lukaku clearly done a thumbs up, clearly done a thumbs up. So don't try to instigate something that isn't there, in my opinion. I personally think it's Cap. I think a lot of people now are going to be picking on every minute little thing. When reality is you're making this personal when it should be about the fundamental football. The guy's just not good enough for Chelsea and you don't need to be an absolute asshole about it. My personal opinion. I think you should be more criticising his game, rather his body language and his demeanour and everything. I've told you guys many times. I don't agree with his touch, I don't agree with his effort level, as in running across the pitch and running the channels. I think it's important when you're a Chelsea striker, and more importantly, I don't like his finishing. I don't think he's up there with creme de la creme strikers. I think he's tier below. I think you've got the world class, and then you've got him, and then you've got the Tammy Abrahams. That's how it works. For me, Roman Lukaku is not. You're all going to sit here and say, Alex, it's very easy to be critical, but what's the solution, mate? What's the solution? And I'll tell you guys what the solution is. Many times, I've said it before, I'll say it. Kai Havertz is the solution. Playing false nine, get hudson Adoy, Pulisic, Mount, Werner, whoever you want in behind him, and let's cook. Because we'll be cooking with oil. We won the Champions League that way. The reason we won the Champions League that way was because we had a collective that worked together. No individual was bigger than the system. The system was going to carry us through to results. In the summer, we rectify it by getting goal scoring creators in behind him and we build off this team. Kai Havertz false nine literally came on yesterday. Numerous chances, numerous creations. Yes, he missed some chances, but I'd rather my players miss them than not get them. 
And this is the issue right now. Lukaku at 31 touches. I guarantee you Havertz and most probably either matched it or had more. That's how good Havertz is. Havertz can carry the ball. He's tight in tight areas. He retrieves it, holds it up well. Decent aerial ability. Good player all round. He was meant to be the centre. And Chelsea opted to go and invest 100 million and put him to the side. Never understood it. I think it's time for Thomas Tuchel to reintegrate him into this team, make it Kai's team, and Kai needs to grab his opportunity while it's there. Lukaku continues like this, he won't be playing for Chelsea much longer. I promise you that. Because Kai, if he grabs his opportunity, Rome's going to end up on that bench. And the same way what happened at Manchester United, when he was literally struggling to get in and have minutes here and there, Rom's going to literally find the exact same situation just on West London, not in Manchester. Kai Havertz is the future of Chelsea, and for me, he needs to have the team built around him. Mason Mount, sprinkle him in there. You want Pulisic? Get Pulisic. If you want Hudson-Odoi, throw in Hudson-Odoi. Havertz is the non-negotiable. It needs to be Kai Havertz. These are my opinion. I assume a lot of you are going to disagree. I assume a lot of you still have faith in Lukaku. But I'm telling you now, once I close this bandwagon, once I close this fair, you can't get back. Because you need to look the facts in the face. Facts are, Rome isn't good. Facts are, we signed the wrong player yet again. The facts are, scouting needs to improve. I can continue all day. She's going to get annoyed. I'm going to end this video here. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I hope you all enjoyed it. No video for you tomorrow, but there will be one on Tuesday and there will be one covering the Club World Cup. Tuesday will be a preview for the Club World Cup and I'll talk about that and any other outfall from this news. Because I guarantee this isn't going anywhere and it's not ending anytime soon. Peace out. I'm out. Bye. Look after yourself.